Hey, boys and girls, Doug Giles here. It's Warriors Rich and Wow Man. What's happening, Doug? This is the New Year podcast. The Happy New Year and, edition. Uh, yeah, exactly. And I'm still uh, wearing a Santa and- hat. It's a different one, but it's the <laughs> season. Well, it's got the it's a skull Santa. I'm, it's a sugar, I'm it's a looking sugar correct skull. through the yeah, it's a sugar, a sugar skull, skull with the Santa hat. Okay. Yeah, so it's uh, goodbye, death to 2021, and hello to 2022. Let's I gotta go. Tell you, I got to tell you, Rich, uh, I think most New Year's resolution are complete BS. Nobody keeps them. Nobody does. There are very few. And uh, I think, um, you know, so here's my New Year's resolution. You ready for this, Rich? I'm ready. I'm going to get hooked on crack. I'm going to gain 400 pounds. I'm going to become a transgendered Marxist radical named Tanya. So, well, ladies and gentlemen, I'm, this is the last and final episode of Warriors and Wild Men. <laughs> Thanks for coming out. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, uh, in line with my prior statement to the list of what I'm supposed to come become in this 2022 new year, I'm not going to keep it. You know, most people's like, I'm going to put on an inch on my biceps. I'm going to shed, you know, this beer gut. I'm going to read uh, like never before. I'm going to become a real serious Christian. I doubt it. If you're not operating like that on a regular basis, then you're probably, unless the Holy Spirit just completely invades your mm-hmm. immoral, lazy, stupid, and fat life, you're probably going <laughs> to still be the. You're still going to be the clunk that you were in 2021. I think I think Rich, we should always, you know, no matter what year it is and changing of seasons and time. I think we should always be aggressive. I think we should always be visionary. I think we should always be growing. I think we should always be changing. I think we should always be attacking the mirror, always aspiring, always bettering, always becoming an uh, an asset to God and to humanity. And I don't think, you know, some kind of new year should make you turn over a new leaf. That's well, how you should roll. That's how you and I should operate. We're always chewing. We're the hungry little piglet trying to get on the teeth of plenty instead of all of a sudden you just wake up and realize your whole life's been a disaster and uh, you're going to change it in just you're going to change it in a day i don't think so you got in that crap sling uh it took you 40 years to get in that mess that you're in it's going to take you 40 to get out if you're really serious about changing your life well it won't take 40 to get out most people are three or four good decisions away from uh, becoming a successful person But first, they're not open to receive any of the four from anyone else. So unless an angel comes. So what what are the three or four things that they'd have to do uh, in order to just get out of the rut that they're in and move forward with God in life? Well, think about this. Um, You could think about a person you know that you're not that close to, but somebody you know that you, you know, right? If they came and asked you and five other people, tell me three things I need to do. And I'm not talking about become a millionaire, right? I mean, just tell me three practical things I could do that change my life. If that person asked 10 people, 90% of those would be the same three things. If you let the people around you help you and you're honest, and if you're not a crybaby, like some people say, well, there's a saying that says this, there's things that you know about you that everybody knows about you. There's things that you know about you that no one knows about you. There's things that everyone knows about you that you don't know about you. And then there's things that, You don't know about you and no one knows about you. God knows about you, right? Those are the things that are being discovered. But the reality is there's too many things that people know about you that you don't know about yourself. And if you aren't the kind of person that's trying to find out what those things are, then you don't want help, right? I I was at this this, uh, place hanging out with some people that I had just met and I walked away and my wife heard the one guy say, man, that guy can really talk. He's a talker. And uh, my wife told me that and I didn't get sad. I wasn't offended. I was, I thought, wow, that's a valid observation I've known since I was a little kid that I talked too much. And so I'm not going to get mad at everybody else. I'm 53 years old. If I don't know that by now and I'm an idiot, right? So I told my wife, well, I have to remember to talk less when I'm around new people that I don't know. And that's cool. You know, sometimes I get excited and just talk like crazy. So the next times I hung out with them, with these people next few times, Um, I listen more and engage more, you know, and then this, maybe a couple weeks ago, I was talking to the guy and he said to me, Hey, you know what I like about you? I said, what? I, I didn't know what, what he, where he was going with it. You know, he said, man, he goes, you know, you really listen. 
and you care about what people are saying. And he said, and I love to listen to you when you talk because you add real value to like what people are talking about. And so you know what that was, Doug, is the first meeting. Well, he's a talker. So also they don't like competitions with other talkers. And I know that because I'm a talker. So, <laughs> so it's amazing that me and you can have a podcast, right? So, cause we're talkers, right? So anyway, I realized what I did is I got out of balance because I got excited because I was meeting these new people. I didn't blame it on anybody else. I'm not going to live my life unconscious. When I hear something about me, if I don't already know it, I'm going to apply it, right? So if you're a person that throws a fit, if somebody tells you something, then no one will tell you anything. I had a guy tell me one time, well, my wife never listens to me. I said, well, um, are you somebody that she wants to listen to? And then he told me later, Ooh. well, my wife never tells me anything. And I said, are you someone that someone wants to tell anything to? Like if somebody, if, if the wife tells the husband, hey, you're argumentative. I don't like when you come home, you're grumpy. And you throw a fit and yell at her. You think she's going to like help you refine your character. No way. No one will. And so I think it's important to listen to people, right? And so those three things would be different for most people, but they could be very simple things. I'm not talking about major things, very simple things could turn people's lives. I told a guy recently, here's an example. Stop drinking, stop doing drugs, go to work every day. And there was one more. Oh, stop lying. I said, if you would do those four things, your entire life would change within one month. Now, it might not put him back where he was, right? But his life would be turned around. But somebody doesn't want to hear that. You know, sometimes that's too hard, I guess. But I was going to tell you a story on New Year's Re resolution. Sorry, I'm hijacking the entire podcast. Here I go talking to talk to talk. I was in Hawaii and I was scuba diving. Pre it was yeah. rough. It was terrible, you know, scuba diving in Hawaii. And we were going to go see these caves, <clears throat> which it's deep there, but you have to swim close to the wall. And there's a surge from the waves that's hitting these walls and coming back, right? And so I'm swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming and swimming. And I'm so tired, Doug. Like I'm exhausted and you're not supposed to be out of breath scuba diving it's it's dangerous actually and i look over at the dive guide and when the surge comes against him he puts his arms by his side and keeps his legs straight lets the water go over him and when it comes back he kicks and then he loses a couple feet and it comes back he kicks and he's having the time of his life so i did that too and when i started doing that i was like wow look and he said come look in this cave and i put my face in there and i was three feet from a shark it wasn't a dangerous shark but it was in the cave Anyway, my point is, even in war, you got to push and you got to pull back and you got to push and you got to pull back. So we, no one can maintain revival intensity. You know, um, Charles Finney wrote about that, too. He said everybody needs revival about every six or seven years, every person, every church. So we can't live at that intensity. But I don't think we should wait to the beginning of the year to make a change. You know, you can make a change any time during the year. It doesn't have to be Monday either. It could be Wednesday. Right. So anyway. I've said everything I'm going to say on the podcast. The rest is yours. <laughs> yeah, I think if uh, I think if folks are serious about changing, I think and say that their life is you know kind of eesh, you know a, a little abysmal at this juncture. I think one of the most important things that I could tell anybody who's really serious about you know becoming what God wants them to become is you got to take stock of who you're running with, man. Mm. If if you know, I've got I've got guys that I disciple. I got peers that challenge me, and I've got uh, living people and dead people. You know, uh, in Christ in particular, being my main hero and my main aspiration. Um, I've got I've got serious folks that are around me, either below me or you know next to me or above me, and uh, that keeps old Dougie, old buddy, old pal, creative, working and uh, inspired to greatness. But if you're mm. around a bunch of scrubs, especially young people, man, I would get around some older cats who are successful that challenge you to greatness. And uh, that's how you really change, man. Yeah. If you walk with stupid people, you're going to be stupid. Yes. If you walk with the wise, you're going to be wise. And, you know, sometimes, you know, you got to, you got to uh, lovingly chop some people off, you know, even, even family. It's like, you know what? You're not going where I want to go. Doesn't mean that I'm better than you. You know, we're all stupid, sinful idiots. It's like if you really want to do these things in the new year, man, you've got to surround yourself with a lot of people <clears throat> that are going that direction. And what's going to be funny, uh, Rich, is that the people that are successful and in whatever life, 
you know, church, family, state, business, whatever level of success that they're in, and you're not, and you want to join up with them, they're probably going to reject you right. or stiff arm you greatly or oppose you and not listen to your emails and not respond mm-hmm. to your text. And you just got to press in like Elisha did to Elijah. I mean, Elijah's trying to push this cat off and he just stayed with him, stayed with him, stayed with him. And uh, boom, look what he did. Did yep. twice the works that Elijah did. And so that's that's my whole thing, man. And you got to, I would, I would cut friends off quote unquote friends. Well, can Again, I, just, can I not, just add some clarification? Yeah, to that and see if, I, I'm not, I want you to finish your thought on that. But um, so when you say cut them off, cause I'm thinking, yeah, definitely. But in my mind, I'm thinking like family, I'm not cutting them off just way less time. Like I'm not going to be involved in all that or friends, not right. like I'm never <clears throat> talking to you again. I'm just not going to be involved in the daily drama of your life. Is that what you mean? Or you mean like, yeah, I don't, I don't mean, you know, uh, be ugly about it. But again, you know, when you get to the 60-year mark, which I'm 59, man, time, ooh, it's precious. Precious. And uh, you you got to get to a place where it's like, I don't have time for this kind of crap. I don't have time to sit around and talk about, you know, pedantic bull crap. I don't have time to just sit and talk about stupid or small issues or get into somebody's weird drama. Like, if you really aspire to, you know, to to something that's holy, just, and good, and you got a holy grail fixed in your mind that you want to go find, then, man, you have got to run with the seekers and the movers and shakers that are doing that. And, and like, when I first got saved and stuff, and I had a lot of buddies that weren't converted, I tried to get them into the fold, and a lot of them did later on in life. But it came to a place where it's like, I can't, I can't you know, again, not that I'm better at all, because I was a, and still am, you know, this... Ooh, I can be, I can be evil rich, but it's like, I got to hang out with people that yeah. freaking aspire to God's will and greatness. And I can't, I can't do this anymore. Right. And so, so again, if, if you have these resolutions and if you want to change, man, you've got to get around people that are doing what you want to do. Cause that stuff rubs off, man. It comes by osmosis. It's caught, not taught. And uh, you can have all these great desires. You can have all these great goals. And if you're still hanging out with trolls, you're not going to get it. There's yeah. <laughs> there's no way it's going to come about, man. Well, you, you the said... Second, the, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. The second thing I want to uh, tell people is get off social media. Like, mm-hmm. I love it when I get my weekly report, Rich. It's like, you were down 15% on social media than you were last week. And I'm like, hoorah. That's great. Mm-hmm. Unless if I'm on there, I'm selling something or I'm or I'm pushing, you know, people to God and people to, you know, freaking find what your bone is and chew on it and uh, get busy with life. Other than that, I'm not sitting there surfing, constantly looking for that kind of crap on there. So social media. So it used to be television because most people spent 50 hours watching TV mm-hmm. instead of pursuing their dreams. Can you imagine if they allocated... Fifty percent of those fifty hours just to work on their business, work on their relationship, work work on their walk with God, work on their knowledge base, apologetics, Christian worldview, work on servanthood, and doing things that are you know value added to the community and to the church, to the state in general. They just took twenty five hours of their fifty hours of freaking television, watching other people live their dream, <laughs> mm-hmm. while you're not living yours. I'm telling you, boom, ipso facto, yep. man, your life will change in 2022. Or take a little bit of that time and read a book, and then you won't be so dumb to talk to. Yeah, I tell people all the time, that's why, like, uh, for Cigars and Sermons, we're going verse by verse through the book of Mark, because I want people's Christology to be solid instead of imaginative and what yeah. the dipstick evangelicals think. It's like, no, we're reading this through, and we're yep. going to slow crawl it. It might take us two or three years. And then our campfire meetings, which is what we call our men's powwow for the cigars and sermon uh, boys that rock up. We're studying Westminster Shorter Catechism. We're going through the first 38 articles of it because if I'm going to hang out with you, I want you to know right. those things that, that make you know the body of Christ, the things that created Western civilization in this grand experiment in self-governance. And it's right there in Westminster Shorter Catechism, which was the children's uh, catechism the children's teaching for, you know, uh, people in the 17th century and most adults, rich, they don't know 
those first 38 articles of Westminster Shorter Catechism, they never even heard of it. Mm-hmm. And it is the foundation that, of Protestantism, which built Western civilization, which rolled into, again, America. Right. And so if we want to save our country and we want to revive the church, then you've got to have that kind of knowledge base. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's really good. So, Yeah, people need to change their mind about who they hang out with. Uh, if you, I'll give you an example. I was at the mall yesterday and I saw a guy walking around and he's got to be 6'4", six, 6'5", six, walking around in a dirty pair of yellow sweats. A kid, probably 20 years old, 19. Dirty pair of yellow sweats at the Scottsdale Mall. A t-shirt. And he's walking around pulling on his penis, like adjusting it in the store. Okay. If you, Lovely. if you know anyone like that, um, please don't go within 10,000 10, miles of them. Like if those are your friends, they're losers. And so are you. Um, if you dress like that, you are an absolute idiot. Um, yeah, I, that's all I have to say about that. If you hang around with people that can't, if you're wearing your pajamas, or you're wearing sweats and stuff to Walmart or wherever you go hang out, just write down, or, I'm a loser. Like, you're gross. You're disgusting. Take a freaking shower, too. By the way, this is America. We take showers every day. Get up on that. Get some soap. And we can all tell when you don't wash your greasy hair. And then if you wonder why life isn't fair, well, it's no problem. It's because you're stupid. I heard Shaq recently, and he was talking about his son said to him, he said, yeah, but we're rich. He said, what are you talking about? I'm rich. You don't have anything right. like, see, that's proper parenting. I also read a great book yeah. this week. A guy said, a coach said, <clears throat> I'm tired of hearing parents talk about how much kids have changed. Kids haven't changed. They don't know anything. They only know what you teach them. You have taught them to be lazy. You've taught them to be entitled. You have made them weak. Kids have not changed. Parents change. So if you're a kid, all you have to do to succeed in this generation is like, wake up, brush your teeth, get dressed, get out the door by seven or eight o'clock in the morning. You're already ahead of 90% of the turds in this generation. And I did call them turds and I mean it from the depths of my heart and my soul. But for those that, that want to make some changes this year, here's, here's a couple um, um, things by Casey Treat on how to make it happen. Because I like what you said, Doug, whatever your bone is, like get after it. Whatever your, your goal has got to be your passion, right? And so your passion needs to be your passion. It's not a new year's resolution to do this it has to become a passion. So case tree says vision leaders start with a vision of where they want to go, what they want to build and what they will accomplish. Right. He said the vision of a true leader is a passion that consumes his life. See, that doesn't count as a new year's resolution. Just what you were saying, exactly. get after it. It's right. a passion, right? A leader carries vision in his spirit and soul 24 seven. Your vision is the blueprint you are building. So you have to have a vision, but you also have to have passion about that vision. And that vision is, is the blueprint of what your energy and action should be going toward. If you have that as your vision, if you have it set in front of you, it's your passion. You're not going to be on the couch, right? Um, and your vision is your future. Well, and the vision, yeah, and the vision, uh, again, it doesn't make you better. It's just, it's just the path that God puts you on. And so it's it uh, by fiat, it's going to make you separate from people who don't share your vision. And again, it doesn't mean that they're they, they could be, you know, just full on, you know, just rude, loser dorks like you were talking about. Or it could be great people with a different vision, but it's not your vision. And so to me, it's like one of the most important things is like God make known to me why, why I'm schlepping this pebble right now. Right. What am I here for? And, uh, and then once that gets in, you know, just start uh, fueling it with the word of God, fueling yes. it with other visionaries and getting those people around. Because that's, you know, uh, talking about that guy walking around grabbing his dick and wearing sweats and stuff in the mall. The reason he's doing that, because he doesn't have a vision. Once you have a oh, vision. Oh, he has a vision. You know, it's it's just, a ghetto vision. Well, I remember, I remember when, uh, when I had uh, this girl that I really liked and I was just freshly... Uh, I had my new twigs and berries right out of puberty, Rich, and I was hoping and scoping. And this girl just so dreamy and so beautiful. And uh, but the problem was is that she was a Christian and she knew karate. And I was a drug-addled <laughs> moron, and uh, I didn't know diddly squat. But what happened is that because I had the vision of this UFO, an unidentified female object, 
I all of a sudden started changing. I started combing my hair. Yep. I started getting some some better looking clothes, tuck my shirt tail in. And all that all all that discipline came from vision. And just like Solomon says, and I think it's Proverbs twenty nine, eighteen or twenty eight nineteen. I don't know. I forget sometimes. But he said, if you don't have a vision, you're going to be unrestrained. And yep. uh, one translation says, if you don't have a vision, you're going to run naked, you know? And so here this kid is without a vision. And so parents, if, if you've got a kid like that, number one, that's your fault. Uh, number two, instead of yelling at him all the time, which some of it's appropriate, uh, just pray to God that he drops the dime on them about what they're supposed to do with their life. Mm-hmm. And then everything comes into order. I mean, I've, 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 pray constantly uh when my kids were young lord give them a vision give them a calling and boom yep. here it comes and all the stuff of dissipation of of wasting time not that they were like that because they've been hard workers ever since they were young but it's all motivated principally that we are here first and foremost to glorify god and to enjoy him forever yeah and so you seed that into your kids they're going to start being the heat seeking missile that divining one that's looking for the water of life. And then they're going to start pursuing it till then it's just business as usual, get mm-hmm. a better car, you know, watch Netflix series. Same do this stupid and do stuff. That. Yeah, it's like, come on folks, you, the little dork loser, just like I used to be, man, ask God to give you a vision, to give you a dream. Cause he's looking, it says his eyes are roaming this planet looking for somebody whose heart's his. It didn't say he's looking for somebody who's perfect. It didn't say he was looking for anybody who had, you know, what motivational speakers say, great potential. He's just looking for somebody who has a heart after him. And he said he will come in there and he will strongly support that person. Right. So anywho, well, that's my sermon for the new year, I, brother. I love it, man. And and when you, uh, if you, have you read Henry Blackaby's study, um, Experiencing God? No. You should, you should get that. It's older. It is awesome. I I took a lot of young people through that years ago, but his concept right off the bat, the concept is this. Stop asking God, what is your plan for my life? And just ask him, what's your plan? Because the focus of my life, what's your plan for my life is my life. And when you say, God, what's your plan? Then the focus is God. And this is what he says, Doug, you're going to love this. You'll never forget this. He says, find out where God is moving and join him in his work. Hello. Come on, man. That's gold, right? The the whole book is stuff like that. But the concept is you don't have to stay at home praying about what you're supposed to do. Find out where God is always working because what's God's plan? The salvation of people, discipleship, right? Get somewhere where people are doing that. Jump in there and serve that vision. And you know what? God will give you vision but it'll be to promote the kingdom and to do those things. But that happens when you get around people that are doing it, right? Just what you were saying. Stop surrounding yourself with people that are doing nothing or doing stupid stuff and get around some people that are loving God and doing this thing, man. You'll find out the the greatest thing in life for me is every time somebody gets saved, every time someone gets saved. And then when somebody that I'm, that I'm raising up a leader, when they lead someone to the Lord, that that's, that's the there stuff right there. And and, and the, you, I don't have anything that I own that's more important than that to me. And I'm not saying that because I'm a pastor. I guess that's why I am a pastor. But but everybody that I know that's led somebody to the Lord, they love it. It's addicting. It's the greatest thing. So, you know, too many people are trying to figure out, God, what's your plan for my life? Well, get involved with people who are serving God and you will know. He'll show you. It's like a boat with a rudder. That rudder doesn't do anything if that boat's not moving. You want to know God's plan for your life. Jump into God's plan. He'll steer you because that rudder is steering your life. But if you're not moving, it's not working. Yeah. And again, I can't underscore how important it is to have around you, no matter where you hail from, Warrior Wildman listener. If you if you're around people that are full on pipe hit and nut cutters for whatever their calling is, that's going to become infectious, man. Yeah. Because first you'll feel like, you know, crap, I don't have anything going on in my life. And then all of a sudden, if they don't reject you, (laughs) as they keep talking, then all of a sudden things start unfolding in your mind and your heart and your spirit. And uh, because the people that you're around are energetic, they're after, again, whatever, you know, God has called them to do. And it's multifaceted. There's there's so many things, you know, that that uh, that God can do through uh, a poor, sinful human being that it's uh, it's 
there, there's not just a little couple of things that God wants you to do. You know, right, you're right. a pastor, you're an evangelist, you're a discipler. And I've got I've got buddies who their whole passion as a Christian is to make them understand the Constitution, the Bill of Rights, and the Declaration of Independence. Right, right. And it's freaking beautiful yeah. uh, how it coalesces uh, with uh, evangelism and discipleship, you know? And um, But when you're around those kind of people, and they're talking, and they're building, and you're there, and you're sitting in on it, all of a sudden, I'm telling you, man— uh, that that spirit that aspires uh, righteously to an ambitious life, it starts coming out of you, and uh, ideas pop, and uh, things begin to flourish. And it's just because who you're hanging around. But if you're yep. around a bunch of dullards, who even Christian dullards, that all they talk about is like we talked about in the gossip podcast. They just talk about people, yep. and they bitch and complain, or they're focused on uh, non-essential aspects of Christianity, or or the Word of God, not saying that the Word of God's not essential, but they're into, uh, again, this inbreeding Arguing type stuff. Yeah, yeah who's, who's the beast in Revelation? And uh, again, just some deep weeds and some heavy theological stuff that aren't essentials. So uh, they can be wasteoids, too, that you need to separate from. I'm telling you, man, I've been around some sinful guys that have more on the ball from a business standpoint and from an aggressive uh, defense of that, which is holy, just, and good, spiritually and physically, that it's caused me to, uh, I don't know, grow a couple inches in the spirit realm. Yeah. But another thing, uh, uh, lastly, Rich, and I'll, I'll hand it off to you and we'll close this thing. Another thing that I, I talk about to people who are wondering, you know, what's the will of God? Well, first of all, he wants you to be his completely. Yep. The will of God is your sanctification. And so that you're wholly at his disposal. But another thing that, that I've found in my life, uh, in other people's lives, is what pisses you off and what gives you great joy. So your call is going to be right around those two emotions. Mm -hmm. Something that gets your dander up, some kind of injustice, some inequity, some absurdity. And then also, you know, something like you said that gives you great joy because then you're not going to work not a single day. And if you've got if you've got righteous indignation against something that's going on, again, yeah. it's 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 not work. It's there. And God made you feel these deep feelings for that which is unjust and that which is just and good. So just ride ride that thing. Yeah. That's that's your surfboard, man. So wherever your really passions good. lie, you know, then then just focus in on that. Get around people that have the same passions. And uh, you're going to see 2022, which could be a very weird year. And I tell people right here and now, nobody expected 2020 to be the way it was. Nobody expected 2021 to be the way that it was. And uh, <laughs> for all the prognosticators out there in regards to 2022, I'm telling you right here and now, folks, is that we do not know what tomorrow is going to bring literally. So my, my last advice, Rich, I swear this is it. I would deepen your walk with God. Yeah. I would get into the scripture like never before. I would serve in the body of Christ like never before. Because if things get worse, God protects his own first and foremost. Mm, good. Yeah. And he's good. worth it whether thing gets worse or not. But uh, we can prepare in all kinds of way, and, and we can say we're going to do all kinds of things in the coming year. But we literally... Don't know. I go to uh, my favorite news websites every day just looking to what the hell changed today. Mm -hmm. And uh, the left hates us. The Marxists hate us. Uh, they are going to persecute the church. Uh, I guarantee it's, it's going to come like a freight train. Yep. And so in 2022, aside from these lofty goals or business goals or uh, body goals or whatever, my, my goal is to eat the scroll get grounded in God like never before because he is our strong tower. Yeah. He's our defense. He's our warrior. He's, uh, he's our high rock that we hide in when the crap hits the fan. Love it. And uh, yeah, that's great. That's, that's the main thing. This is get your relationship right with God. I, you were talking about hang around people and they don't want you around because they're higher level than you. I have some practical advice on that that I've used my whole life because I've hung around people that are way beyond my level for most of my Christian life. And I'll tell you what it is. Number one is uh, don't try to impress those people. Um, number two, go there as a servant yep. to do whatever you can do to make yourself useful that they want you around. And then uh, three, 
maybe it should be number one, respect, respect, respect. Take the lowest seat. Uh, don't, don't pretend to be humble. If you're smart enough and you recognize who you're with, you should be humble anyway, or you're too stupid to hang out with them. But when you go there, just show tons of respect and every chance you get to, to help, help. And, and this isn't in the church, but I, I got to go scuba diving with a famous, famous underwater photographer, um, Roger Steen. And he has like, if you go to Barnes and Noble, you'll find a book that thick that goes on your coffee table, underwater photography guys, world famous in that, in that, that, uh, thing. And so I went to this place and they said, Hey, we have a surprise for you. And tomorrow you're diving with Roger Steen. And I was like freaked out. And I asked my friend, I said, what's up? He doesn't like people to dive with them. He said, well, I'm a personal friend of his. And because you have so, um, so much good dive etiquette and you're so respectful, they actually asked him, not me, if you could go on the boat with him. Well, when I got there, he's older. He has a leg that was injured in a motorcycle accident when he was younger. And so he uses a walking stick. The second that I saw that, Doug, I was picking up that guy's gear, carrying it everywhere that we went. Every single place that we went, I carried his gear. And you know what happened? On the second day, he said, hey, Rich. I said, yeah. And he said, can, can you run over to my room and, and grab my stuff for me and meet me up there? Because it was up a bunch of stairs, you know? I was like, yeah, I got that. And, bro, I'm telling you, I, my level of photography is not even, I can't even work with the people that he works with. But because I was respectful and I was a servant, he was looking for me because I was helping him. Guys, you can do that. And, and, and it didn't yep. take humility on my part. It just took recognizing, right? Do that in the church. Do it in business. Wherever you do it, go in with a servant attitude and show respect. Make yourself useful. And they will look for you. They will invite you. When they would introduce me in church, Doug, when we traveled the world, they'd say, this is this person, this person, this person. And I'm sitting there next to Pastor Cesar, and they said, um, this is rich. Uh, pastor Cesar likes him. They literally didn't even know how to introduce me because I didn't have a position. I was a servant. And so if you do that, those guys will let you hang out with them. Amen, man. Yeah. All right, brother. So happy new year to you. Happy new year to you too. And to Mary Margaret and your family. Yours as well, brother. Thanks. So man. what's the Warriors and Wild Men uh, listener, the subscriber, what do they need to do? Okay. I'm going to read the priestly blessing over them real quick, everybody, for the beginning of the year, end of this one, and, and going into the ne next one, number six. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make mm -hmm. his face shine on you and be gracious Come to on. you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Yes. We like that. In Jesus' Go to name, man. Yes, amen. Go to warriorsandwildmen.com. Subscribe. It's free. Send you a couple emails a week. Keep you posted. You can listen to wherever you hear your podcasts. But uh, make sure you, you uh, subscribe to Warriors and Wild Men. That way we can keep in touch with you. And then if you want to help support the ministry, uh, go to the War Chest. That's tax deductible. We'll send you that information on that. For those that are, thank you guys so much for helping us do the ministry. Push it out there farther, deeper, wider. Warriors and Wild Men. Happy New Year.